Hi there, I'm Christopher Green, and you're watching There's No Time Like the Past. If you are Canadian, you've most likely heard of Lucy Maud Montgomery's book, Anne of Green Gables. In fact, even if you're not Canadian, you've most likely heard of Anne of Green Gables. Whether you read the classic book, or saw the classic Megan Follows film, or if you rode the Green Gabler in PEI, I'm serious, that's a real thing. You've most likely heard of Anne of Green Gables. But did you know that Anne of Green Gables author, Lucy Maud Montgomery, lived in Oxbridge? You might be thinking, didn't she live in PEI? And she did. But she also lived in Leeskdale, in the township of Uxbridge, where her husband was a pastor. In fact, she published half of her books while living in Uxbridge. Recently, the Lucy Maud Montgomery Society of Ontario was kind enough to sit down with the Standard for an interview about Maud's time in Leeskdale. So now we take you to the Leeskdale Mance. Chris with Standard Newspaper here with Barb Pratt of the Lucy Maud Montgomery Society of Ontario. We're in the parlor, right? That's of right. the Mance which would be where Lucy Maud Montgomery lived for, for how long was it? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. When was it that she moved? She came to Ontario, to Leeskdale, in 1911. She had been engaged to Ewan MacDonald, who was the minister of the Presbyterian Church in Leeskdale. And uh, after her grandmother died in Cavendish, Prince Edward Island, she was free to marry and uh, she was 35. She and Ewan got married, and she came to Leesdale as a bride and stayed for the next uh, 15 years, from 1911 to 1926. She would have been here for the First World War and everything? That's too. right, yes. There were very fulfilling but years that were fraught with sadness mm -hmm. and angst, especially during the war. Her children were born here. Chester was born first, and uh, then she had a stillborn son, little Hugh, who was buried in the cemetery at the Foster Memorial down the road. And uh, that was a very sad time for her to lose that child. Then she had a third child, Stuart. Uh, Stuart was about five, I think, when they moved on to Norville from Leesdale. Do so you think that the light-hearted nature of her writing then was kind of an escapism a little bit? Yeah, she said that she never wanted to show her own dark side in mm -hmm. her writing. So her writing is generally, some would say frivolous, some would say just happy stories. But after the war, actually, there is a darker side showing in her stories. There are deaths and uh, disappointments more in her later work. But, uh, but generally, people think of her, her work as, as happy. People say she was such a, an unhappy woman, mm. but she did bring a lot of happiness to a lot of people. How many books did she write while she was here? She wrote 11, she published 11 books while she was here. I can't say she wrote them all here because some of them uh, were probably uh, combinations of, of stories that she'd written before right. or work, working up uh, ideas that she'd had before. Do you know the names of any of the notable ones that she was written? Yeah, the or? Emily of New Moon series okay. she wrote while she was here. And they were her favorite books. She liked Emily as a character better than Anne, and uh, she seemed to think that uh, the character of Emily was closer, closer to her, mm -hmm. to her character. Do you think then the, the area and the people in the area really did, did it kind of show through, do you think? Or? She did write one uh, novel uh, called Blue Castle, which is set in Muskoka, okay. and she wrote that as a result of a holiday that she and uh, Ewan took and stayed in, uh, in Muskoka, in Bala. She came back and wrote uh, The Blue Castle and set it in Muskoka. But um, the book Rainbow Valley, which she wrote after the First World War, there is a valley across the Leesdale Road with a stream running through it and woods. And that really is her Rainbow Valley. How did the Lucy Maud Montgomery Society of Ontario itself sort of start out? The story of Lucy Maud Montgomery living in Leesdale has been uh, in everybody's mind right from the time she arrived in 1911. Uh, so 
there's always been an interest in her life in Leesville. The township of Uxbridge took over the manse mm -hmm. uh, when the uh, Presbyterian Church didn't need it anymore. Uh, and I think that was in the 19, early 1980s. I could be wrong there. Um, and then there was a committee formed, a committee of council, that uh, sort of looked after the manse and promoted the idea of, mm -hmm. of her living here. But it wasn't until 2004 that that committee decided that we had to buy the church because it was up for sale. And so we formed ourselves into a society, registered it uh, so that we can give tax receipts and we're a registered charity. And, uh, and proceeded to buy the, to raise the money to buy the church and then start the restoration of the manse. And the manse was totally restored by 2011. Wow. So were you then with the Lucille and Montgomery Society, like right from the beginning then? Or? Was I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just an interest of mine. I had a bookstore in, in Oxford okay. with Heron Books, and uh, I always um, was interested. And while I while I had the bookstore, I had you know events, hosted author events uh, to do with Lucy Maud Montgomery, and so, so I've always been interested. So can others like join the society? Sure. Yeah. How do they go about doing that? Uh, go to the website LucyMaudMontgomery.ca. And uh, there's there's a facility to join the society, and we have members all over Canada and the U.S. and England and Sweden and Japan and everywhere. Personally, what's your favorite uh, work from Lucy Maud Montgomery? If I could pick one, probably the one that I loved when I was growing up was Anne's House of Dreams. I just think it's a very sweet story. But of her work, I'm just fascinated and I can't get enough of reading her journals. Mm. She just uh, has left such a legacy of the story of one woman's life in that time. And a remarkable woman, but an ordinary woman in many ways too. Lucy Maud Montgomery, along with her written works, have been regarded as national treasures. So much so, that now they have a statue of Lucy Maud Montgomery outside the historic church where her husband used to be a minister. I would encourage you to go check out the Lucy Maud Montgomery Society. It's very interesting and they have a lot of educational things for you to learn. Even if you're not into Lucy Maud Montgomery or any of her writing, there's a lot of interesting stuff there to learn about the people of the time. And if you like history, which I imagine you do since you're watching this video, then I think you'll enjoy it. Because after all, there's no time like the past. See you later, guys. has been given some literary treasures to enjoy now in many languages. <laughs>